Okay, so that gives you... Okay, this is another dog, the same part of the assessment, just with a different camera angle. We've got four cameras set up in the assessment, so we're capturing every bit of behaviour we can. So the owner's been asked to walk in again, stand in front of the white chair, just ignoring the dog. And again, think about how you'd rate this dog on amicability. How would you rate it? <laughs> So we're just wanting to see, as simple as the assessment is, we're just wanting to see if it teases out those differences, if we can identify different behaviours within these animals. So again, he's called the animal, and this one didn't want to go over. Okay, so this is the third part of the assessment. The owner is instructed to leave the arena. She doesn't morph, she actually does walk out. She's asked to leave the arena and the dog is off lead at this point and the confederate's asked to call the dog over to him. The dog has a, you know, a chance to come over if he, and if he wants to, if he enters that half circle, the confederate, the stranger is allowed to interact with him. In this case, this Labrador stayed with the confederate the whole time while the owner was absent. <laughs> so again, think about, think about how you'd rate this dog. Okay, this is the same part of the experiment, again with a different camera angle. I need a volume this one. Okay, so he's called the dog over to him. approach the dog. This is the next part of the assessment. <laughs> okay, so again, thinking of those different attributes, how would you rate those dogs? Excellent. And I just thought I'd throw this one in. Get it. I can't talk about this face. <laughs> I hope no one else has videos. <laughs> okay, I just thought I'd throw this one in to see if there's such a thing as too amicable. <laughs> My poor confederate trying to remain as standard as possible. <laughs> okay, so a pilot study has already been conducted. Um, Twelve adult dogs and their owners participated. The assessment was video recorded. And then what we did was we took a sorry, then we took a sample of those videos from the pilot study and showed them to a panel of experts. So people like yourselves, people who are familiar with dog behaviour, and we asked to we asked them to rate the amicability of each of those dogs, just like I've done with you today, and then asked them also how they came to make that judgement. So what behaviours they considered important when deciding how amicable a dog was. And what we found there was a high level of agreement amongst the panel, which was really promising. We did a, a slight refinement to the protocol and then potential measures of amicability were identified and these concluded things such as the dog's orientation, the location of the dog, uh, the activity level, uh, how long it took the dog to approach the stranger and how much time it spent near the stranger as well as its vocalisations and body postures. So data collection is currently underway. I'm actually seeking 200 adult dogs and their owners to participate. So I know some of you here have already participated and thank you. But if there's anyone else who'd like to be involved, please let me know. I'll have flyers out at lunchtime for you to grab. 
And I also need a sample of puppies. So I need puppies six to eight months of age, and I'll explain a bit why later on. The owners, as well as accompanying their dog through a behaviour assessment, as you just saw, will be asked to fill out some questionnaires as well. Now, the next part of my research will involve um, evaluating the assessment's um, reliability. And this, concern, this means running a whole heap of statistical things, and I don't really have time to go into all of it with you today, but these are the different forms of reliability that I'll be looking at. I also need to find out how valid the assessment is. And so things like comparing the owner's responses in the behaviour part of the questionnaire versus the, the dog's uh, behaviour in the assessment. And expecting, if it is valid, that you'd say, see strong correlations. I'll also be looking um, to get a bunch of behaviour experts to look at the footage of some dogs. And I'd expect that if the assessment is valid, that the really amicable dogs would be identified by the experts. Now, the sample of puppies I mentioned later on, we want to see if the assessment can also be predictive. So if we test puppies at six to eight months of, year, months of age, and then again when they're adults, are we seeing the same sort of behaviours? Is the assessment a predictable measure? We'll also be running things like principal component analyses to see which variables uh, clump together and which best um, identify amicability. Now, if this assessment is found to be an objective, reliable and valid measure of amicable dog behaviour, then it has the potential to assist with dog owner matching. It also provides... Hang on a sec. It also provides the basis for a development of further assessments aimed at measuring other behavioural traits. So there's going to be other traits that people consider more important than amicability, and this really provides a starting point, as Pauline mentioned. And I think it could be utilised, this assessment could be utilised by a range of organisations. For instance, dog welfare organisations could use the assessment with rehoming dogs. Presumably people are going to want different levels of amicability, so you could help with the better dog owner matching. Now, another reason to develop a behaviour assessment such as this is to assist breeders in making breeding choices. And because behaviour is in, in part controlled by genetics, it could help breeders with selecting and breeding dogs, both with the best confirmation and the best temperaments or the best behaviour, especially the dogs that are going to be suitable living in today's society. So just like you test for hips, you have hip scores and eye tests, we could also have a behaviour component as well. Dog trainers could also use the assessment. So, you know, doing a, a profile on a dog's behaviour prior to implementing some sort of training regime. And lastly, instead of councils focusing primarily on identifying and managing dangerous dogs, the existence of an assessment capacity may mean that pet dog owners can have their adult dog's behaviour objectively assessed and for desirable personality traits. And exchange, you know, you have such a dog, you could be given access to off-leash areas or reduced registration, for instance. So just to conclude, behaviour in the, in the past may not be desirable today, especially the types of behaviour we originally selected for. Most dogs today are, are companions to us. Although breeds resulted from selecting for functional behaviour, there is a lot of individual uh, variation within a breed. Therefore, it should be possible to select those with the good confirmation as well as the ability to best fit in with today's society. What I found with my study is that people want amicable dogs. We also know that behaviour assessments really need to be developed stringently, hence my PhD. And the ability to, to better describe dog behaviour could benefit a range of organisations. So I just want to thank the Pet Care Information Advisory Service and the Bureau of Animal Welfare for funding my research and also Ospy for providing the cameras. So if you do own a dog, please come and see me later on if you do want to participate. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Tammy. Um, there's not enough time for questions, so we'll move on, but 